These dramatic cliffs form the furthest edges of Tasmania's southeast and the start of a diver's paradise. Mick Barron has been diving off the east coast of Eaglehawk Neck for 50 years. Well, I don't know what it was, but I just developed this affinity for the water as a kid. So and that just grew into my job. It's a familiar landscape to the 65-year-old, but the waters he plunged into as a teenager were vastly different. The kelp was so thick. In some places it was so thick you had to part it with your, with your arms as you swim through it. Of course it would catch in all your dive gear and whatever. Few other Tasmanians have experienced firsthand the drastic transformation of this once thriving underwater world. In December of 15, the temperatures along here were about 14 and a half degrees. Within two weeks, it's hard to believe, but within two weeks it had jumped to over 17 degrees. So in the, in the ocean, that's a massive change. It was a shock to the system. By April, there was nothing left. Nothing. Not a single strand of kelp was left. Tasmania boasts some of the best diving conditions in the world, owing to the diversity of its marine life. From playful seals to weedy sea dragons, but the major drawcard has always been thick swathes of giant kelp forests, which are disappearing. We still get calls from, oh, I'd like to come down and do that. Well, sorry, it's all over. Recent data from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration indicates the sea surface temperature on Tasmania's east coast is warming at twice the global average. CSIRO data collected off Mariah Island over a longer period suggests Tasmania's east coast is warming at four times the global average. Despite the difference in figures, there's consensus that Tasmania's east coast is a global hotspot that's warming far more rapidly than the rest of the world. As the East Australian current moves south, it's pushing warmer, low-nutrient waters into Tasmania. A series of eddies then act like a spar jet on the state's delicate marine world. It's destroyed 95% of giant kelp forests, and pushed abalone fisheries to the brink. The state's oysters are also facing deadly diseases. Scientists around the world are now looking to Tasmania as a window to the future. After researching the global decline of kelp forests, Dr Kira Kromansel says Tasmania's losses are significant and alarming. There really is a huge powerhouse of research going on out of Tasmania that really has done a fabulous job of highlighting the mechanisms behind the losses and uh, working to develop solutions, really pushing ourselves forward. Despite being known as the gateway to Antarctica, warming waters mean temperate reefs in Bass Strait are becoming more like coral reefs. The warmer currents have caused urchin populations to explode. Long-spined urchins devour kelp forests at a rapid rate and strip the seafloor of any life, leaving desolate urchin barrens in their wake. We've gone from about 3% of the East Coast as barrens owing to this long spine urchin to now uh, more than 15% in, in, that, in that period. Uh, we've gone from just a handful of urchins on the East Coast of Tassie to now an estimated 20 million. The urchins have replaced Abalonian rock lobsters, which once called underwater kelp forests home. Now you're getting addition of new species that, that can play a pivotal role in the ecosystem and send the ecosystem off in a completely different direction, which is now what we're seeing. We're seeing this major transformation of the biology and ecology of Tasmanian reefs. With temperatures predicted to climb further, scientists predict in the future more than half of Tasmania's east coast will be nothing but bare rock. For passionate divers, the growth in urchin populations has been a double-edged sword. The seaside town of Bishano is one of several sites on Tasmania's east coast where the urchins are harvested. Every day a team of divers removes up to a tonne of urchins from the sea floor. Last year there was a record 660 tonnes, ten times the amount caught three years ago. We've noticed now uh, the barrens are recovering, there's weed growth, there's more fish life. 
At this factory south of Hobart, the urchins are cracked, spooned, packed and frozen. Their bright yellow row is a delicacy, bound for local restaurants and several Asian countries. Maybe the urchins is not the demon that everyone thinks it is. It's, it was a problem, but now it's created a lot of employment a lot of revenue for the East Coast community that was probably struggling for both things. Despite the outlook, scientists hope that with careful management, a resilient underwater landscape can be created. The rate of change that we see now is going to increase as well. Um, even if we stopped pollution or whatever you want to call it now straight away, the snowball effect is already there. My grandchildren will never see what I saw.